The 2004 disappearance of Patrice Andres is a cold case explored on Netflix's recent Unsolved Mysteries reboot. Nearly 20 years later, no one is any closer to finding out the truth. What details got left on the cutting room floor? This is the untold truth of Patrice Andres' mysterious disappearance. If you haven't seen the Unsolved Mysteries episode, here's a quick recap. On April 15, 2004, Patrice Andres' day began like any other. It was a typical Thursday. She had several appointments at her hair salon, Tambor's Trim and Tan in Cumming, Georgia, a small town about 45 minutes northeast of Atlanta. She had just finished up one of those appointments at around 11.30 a.m. and was ready to heat up her lunch in the salon's microwave. Andres was a well-known member of the community, and her shop had stood for several years already. As far as anyone knew, she didn't have any enemies. No one seemed to particularly dislike her, and her shop was never the site of any kind of trouble or crime. She'd just come up to you and just throw her arms around you and just be, you know, I mean, she was just always like that. She just loved everybody. So it's very odd that sometime between one client leaving at 11.30 a.m. and her next appointment showing up at noon, Patrice Endres disappeared in broad daylight. Endres's noon client couldn't find her anywhere on the premises, so they called the police, who came out and also couldn't locate her anywhere in or around the hair salon. That was just the tip of what would turn out to be a very weird and confounding iceberg. I picked up her skeleton from in her head and carried her around for a while. There are a few interesting details about the cold case that the Unsolved Mysteries episode cut out. One was an eyewitness who claimed that, on the morning of Patrice Andres' disappearance, she saw a white van parked outside of the salon, and she also spotted an unknown male. Police brought her in for questioning. She described the man in his van in great detail, and she even worked with a police sketch artist to come up with a composite sketch. The authorities had their first suspect and began distributing flyers and other materials with the sketch. They even had it aired on the news, in case anyone who knew him might be watching. Then, something entirely unexpected happened. The witness completely recanted her testimony and said she made the whole thing up. Investigators were naturally frustrated that they had spent so much time and money on what seemed to be a dead-end lead. The witness was subsequently charged with providing false statements, according to the Forsyth County News. These events raise a lot of questions. Why did the witness make up this story, and how did it go so far? According to Unsolved Mysteries, two other witnesses also saw a vehicle outside of the shop, a car, not a van. How did these accounts compare to the false testimony? Was the witness telling the truth, but someone or something forced her to recant her testimony and claim she lied? As Unsolved Mysteries detailed, two serial killers are still suspects in the case, despite their stories pretty much falling apart. There's Jeremy Brian Jones, who claimed he killed Andres and dumped her body in Sweetwater Creek. But as the Forsyth County News puts it, the subsequent discovery of her body some 70 miles from the creek and the fact that Jones failed to provide specifics other than what had been reported on the news quashed any belief he was her killer. Jones ultimately recanted his confession. Then there's Gary Michael Hilton, also known as the National Forest Serial Killer, who committed a string of slayings in North Carolina, Florida, and yes, Georgia. All of these acts took place in national forests, hence the moniker. But here's a detail that Unsolved Mysteries left out. An outdoorsman, Hilton was a consultant on a straight-to-video 1995 film called Deadly Run, which revolves around a serial killer who stalks his female victims in the woods. According to producer Samuel Rail, the whole plot was actually Hilton's idea. Rail, also a lawyer, had Hilton as a client and acquaintance, and when Rail mentioned that he wanted to make a serial killer movie, Hilton brought up the idea of the killer using a large forest as his hunting ground, according to CNN. It wasn't until Hilton's capture in 2008 that Rail realized that Hilton's idea wasn't just a story, but a preview of sorts of what he planned to do. I'm a hunter, Nancy. A damn fine hunter. No woman ever tells about one of my little holidays. Police had good reason to suspect Hilton in the death of Patrice Andres. He had previously killed Meredith Emerson, a woman hiking with her dog in the Chattahoochee National Forest in 2008, where he also disposed of her body. The woods where Andres' body was found were part of the same national forest, about 50 miles away. However, this too turned out to be another dead end. While still technically a suspect, police couldn't find anything definitive connecting Hilton to the disappearance and killing of Andres. Patrice Andres' disappearance and death isn't the only long, unsolved cold case in the area. In 1997, an 11-year-old boy named Levi Frady also went missing, and his remains were found in the same woods where Andres and Meredith Emerson, the victim of Gary Michael Hilton, were found. On October 22, 1997, Levi Frady went to a friend's house after school. He never came home. After visiting with one friend, Levi headed to another friend's house from there to eat dinner. He tried to call home to tell his family of his plans, but his mother was in the bath and couldn't answer. He was supposed to be home by 6.30 p.m., and when he didn't arrive, his mother and twin sister went out looking for him. 
They found his bike on the side of the road, but assumed he'd left it there and continued on foot, planning to grab it later. The following morning, Levi still hadn't come home. Later in the day, hunters found human remains in a forest in Dawson County, Georgia, 19 miles away from where Levi disappeared, according to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. He had been shot twice in the chest and once in the head and then left for dead. It is unknown if the case is linked in any way to the Andres case, and police have never indicated that it is, but the similarities are worth noting. If you have any information about Patrice Andres' cold case, call the Georgia Bureau of Investigation tip line at 1-800-597-8477. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about true crime stories are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.